Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. Um, hopefully you've been here before, but if not, think about subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, and you can always unsubscribe if you want to. So today, I'm going to talk about uh, portable antennas. And I, I've had a lot of questions recently um, on a lot of my videos about what antennas uh, people should use, and ma mainly from new, new uh, licensed hams and they're just confused by all the different types of antennas and I'm just going to kind of break them down this is just a quick overview it's really not going to be anything in depth or anything like that but just a little talk about what we're going to uh, what kind of antennas you can use for portable use and you know I always like saying get out there and do some portable because the noise levels are, are low and if you have like a HOA or something like that and you can't have antennas going out portable is a great way to uh, to have some fun so first of all, you got uh, basically these are going to be all wire, pretty much wire antennas, um, outside of maybe one that I'll talk about, and that's dipoles, uh, quarter wave, vertical, and infed half waves, and both types. First of all, they all have advantages and disadvantages. Um, some are easier to put up, some are take up less space, some might actually perform better. So. We'll talk about each one. So as far as a, uh, a dipole, you have your conventional, you have linked, and uh, a fan dipole, and one of my favorites is a doublet. Um, we'll talk about each one of those. So so most, most people will set up their dipole in an inverted V, either hanging it from a tree or or using a mast and, and that's just because it's, it's just easy. It's easier to do that than try to get it you know try to get it flat. Um, that, that and getting it flat. I mean, if you could hang from tw two trees and get it fairly flat, that's probably going to be pretty good. And most of the time, your dipoles, uh, depending on the band, you're you're not going to be super directional. Uh, I always try to set mine up. Uh, usually, the dipoles shoot off the side, so I usually set mine a north south configuration but a lot of times it's really not going to be that directional because you can't really get it high enough for all the bands okay if, if you don't have an internal tuner say you got a 891 whatever any type of radio without an internal tuner you you mostly want to make a resonant antenna for your dipoles or any of the antennas actually um, and on a dipole you basically you have a diff couple different ways of doing that and one is just to make different size you know, different length uh, dipoles for each band that you want to get on. Say you want to do 40 and 20, so you make two. Another way to do it is a link dipole. And a link dipole basically will have a link somewhere on both sides. Well, it'll be, say you have a, a 40, 20, 10. So it'll have, it'll have your 10 will be a link, and then it'll go down to 20, and you add that length. And then the last one, your length will be the 40 meter band. And those are pretty good. Uh, the only real drawback I see with those is you, a lot of times, especially for the, like going from 10 to 20, you have to bring it down, adjust it, and then put it back up. Not a huge, huge problem, but it does take a little time. Um, you can't just switch from band to band. Um, my God, the, the crows are going crazy today. Sorry for the noise. The next one will be a fan dipole. The fan dipole is pretty cool because you can do as many bands as you want. Um, usually, most people do about three, maybe four, sometimes two. But uh, and there's different ways of doing. A fan dipole will give you the opportunity to take your radio and just go click, click, click to each or however you change bands on your radio, and not have to go do anything with your antenna. There's different ways of doing. It. You can you can hang hang one that goes out, and all your different bands hang from the from your lowest band, which will be your longest, that's the one you'll guy out, and all the other ones will hang it. And you want to space them four or five inches apart. It's That one's a little more difficult for a fan dipole to actually to actually hook up because you start with your <laughs> your longest band, you work your way down, and you have to, sometimes you have to adjust all of them to get them right. The other way you can do it also, though, is just, just to guy all different directions for each band that you want. Say you want three bands, so you have six guy points. Now you have more space taken up. That's the only thing with that. But usually you can get by. It's a little bit easier to adjust the uh, the antenna for the band that you want. 
Now, my favorite dipole antenna would be the doublet. I use one at home. Um, what's nice about a doublet, you have to have a tuner. You have to have a good tuner, actually. It can't just be your internal tuner. It won't, it won't work. It's fed with uh, ladder line or open wire, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's like a balance line. Uh, it's a little more efficient than coax. But what's nice about that antenna is you can have one long antenna, say, say 130, say 110 feet. That'll get you 80 to 6. It'll, it'll get you all those bands with one single wire. So if you, if you don't want to have a bunch of wires in the air, it's a good option. Um, it's one of my favorite antennas for like going on a, up on a soda sometimes. I've got one cut for 40. It'll actually tune up on 80 with my KX2. The KX2 has a really good, it's like a 10 to 1 tuner. So it works really well. You need, a lot of times you'll be fed with either a 1 to 1 ballon or a 4 to 1 ballon. There's differences of opinions on that. I have a, there's a good write-up at, at DX Engineering if you look up their dipole, a multi-band dipole, and that, a ton of information in there, and I've used that in the past. Um, I've also used my KX2 with no ballon. I mean, I've got a little kicks, or I got a little ballon that I built from that company, from Elecraft, and it works really good. And it has a 4 to 1 and a 1 to 1 built in. You might check those out. But it, it gives you really good... Con Basically, you just pick a band, you hit the tuner, and you just start making contacts. Um, and like I said, all these, all antennas have some type of compromise. And the compromise there, mostly for me, would be that if you didn't have a decent tuner, like a 5105 will do it, a G90 will do it. And then I, I think uh, the aftermarket uh, antenna tuners for most of your radios will do this also. Okay, now we're going to talk about a quarter wave vertical. The advantages to a vertical is they don't take up a lot of space. I mean, lengthwise, they're, all the space goes up pretty much, except you do will have to have some radials down below, for, and that, that's the second half of the antenna. So basically, a, a quarter-way vertical is half of a dipole, if you think of it that way, if that makes sense to you. So you're taking that part, you're bringing it down, and you're sending it straight up and down. Now, a quarter-way vertical actually has a different takeoff angle. So, so a a dipole may take off like this, a vertical may take off somewhere around here. And what that will sometimes get you a better long distance for DX contacts, um, but I've seen both. I mean, if, unless you have them set side by side on, a, on an antenna tuner, you may not notice the difference out in the field. Now, you can, it's the same thing goes for the uh, verticals. You have to have multiple verticals um, for each band if you don't have a tuner. And actually, for, for those, basically, I don't, I don't, I've no, never hooked one up with ladder line, but probably wouldn't work because you, ha you have to run on the ground. But anyhow, so you need, you need multiple verticals just like you would for a dipole, say, with, um, for your uh, radio. Or you can hook multiple lines um, and I didn't say this in the in the, the fan dipole. Basically, your radial will pick which wire on that fan dipole. Same with a vertical. With basically, it's a half a fan dipole up going up, and then the rest of it's on the ground. It'll pick the uh, the closest match to 50 ohms, and it's just it's like magic. When I first got into, I'm like, oh, how does that work? You know, and and that's that's what I'm trying to clear up for people here, maybe a little bit. So your radio will know which wire to use. So you, you might have five wires, and say you're on 20, it'll pick the one that's closest for 20. And then your internal tuners, if they're not exactly perfect, they'll touch those up a little bit. Now, now I've also had really good luck on a couple of my sodas and potas with a 17-foot stainless steel whip that's extendable. And I, I have my mark for 20, 17, 15, and, and that's usually all I've been using, but it'll do 10. Um, it'll do anything, a 17 footer will do anything higher than 20. So your, so your, your band, like 15, 17, you know, 10, um, it's kind of weird. It goes backwards. The higher bands are the lower numbers, okay? I've also had a little bit of luck just kind of playing with it one day, of wrapping some wire on the top of the, the antenna, taping it on there nice and tight, and extending it out and I was able to get 40 on it. Um, not my favorite thing to do there though, but you can also buy coils to put on the bottom of those. That makes it a little bit less efficient. Uh, anytime you're adding anything like a, 
anything in line like that, it will make your antenna just a little less efficient. It'll still work though. Okay, now it brings us to in-fed half waves. Now there's basically, there's probably more than this, there's different ways of doing it, but an in-fed half wave will have a, a wire that goes from the matcher, which is usually a 64 to one, and it goes out for a full half wave. So, yeah, I like you too. And the, I, they seem to be a little more efficient than a nine to one. Now, a nine to one is a random wire in fed. And the difference there is you, you need to go, you can look up random links of wire for, for antennas, and that'll give you a chart of different size wires that you should use and, and, you, and wires you should not use for an in-fed or any type of a um, random wire. It needs to be random. It can't, you don't want to cut it for 40 because it won't work right. Um, I, the general consensus on a in-fed half wave has a little, is a little bit better, um, but not, not that you're going to notice a ton. Depends on the size of the wire you're using for the nine to one. The nine to ones you can get by with shorter wires, so um, it'll take up less space maybe. So that's that can be good. I, I know I've known people that have set up a, a nine to one on their from one end to their motor home to the back end of their motor home and then bring it inside because it's short. Now, the longer the wire you use, of course, the better it's going to work, or the better it's... My God. Sorry for the noise. But it has this, the 9 to one has this advantage to where it's just, it can take up less space. None of your in-feds are going to be quite as efficient because they're using a matching unit as a dipole or a vertical. Um, that's just kind of the way it is, but you may never notice a difference either. So it's just, it's a lot of it can do, band conditions make a huge difference on how things work. So just, just know that, um, I tell you what, in-fed half waves are a favorite of guys that do summits on the air. And the reason for that is they're quick, they're easy to throw up. They're usually pretty lightweight. So, and, and for guys that are doing summits, you're usually using QRP radios, um, and the wire can be very small. I mean, I've run, I've run 100 watts through 26 gauge. It, it still works. Like I said earlier, this is just a quick overview, especially for new hams. Um, you old hams, you probably all know all this stuff already, or maybe you even learned something. I don't know. I'm, and it's just it's things that I've seen. Uh, you may have different opinions, and that's fine. Um, everybody has their favorite antennas, and I'm just kind of giving an overview, just so people can have different. They can make choices. How's that? So if you got something out of today's video, um, think about hitting that subscribe if you're new here. Hit the all, and that'll get you all my new, newer videos that come out. And if, you are, if you're coming back, thanks for coming back. I, I think, thank you to all my subscribers. You guys have made this a, a great year. I just passed my first year, and I'm a little over, what, 2,600 subscribers? That's pretty good for me. I don't do much advertisement. I hope to see you guys on the airwaves, or hear you guys on the airwaves, I should say. So 73 is all. Be safe. <laughs> it never fails. Okay. So 73 is all. Be safe. Hope to hear you on the airwaves.